Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be dedicated to the MySQL architecture. And in previous video, I have already made you install the MySQL workbench. So you are ready to set up the code, run the code. But before that, it's very important to understand the architecture, how the overall system is working. So without wasting your time, let me take you forward. So guys, uh, the MySQL architecture is basically divided into three parts. Okay. Number one is your client layer. So client layer has some component. Let me come to them. Then second layer is known as a server layer where you have some other component. Then third is the storage engine layer storage engine layer. Now all of them have a significant role. I'll come to that later on. Let me tell you the basic component. So all the applications which users are submitting are going from this only. And then my SQL CLI command line interface, which we call CLI is part of this layer. Then you have the workbench, which we just installed for in the previous video. So these three component are part of the client layer, basically the interaction unit as a, as a programmer, you interact with the rest of the layer using this layer. Now this client layer interact with the server layer. So now when you write something, it will hit the server and in server, what are there? Number one is connection manager. Connection manager is effectively working on the server layer. And when you try to interact with the server layer, it gives you the connection. Then the query parser, which basically defines to the server that what is a query shoot by the customer or the programmer. So on the basis of that, they will take a call that what is the exact meaning of the query. Then you have optimizer. which basically try to optimize the query so that it should not take more time on system and quickly you should be able to get your result. Then last is cache and buffer. So they try to uh, squeeze the memory and free up when the task is done. So that's how the server layer is working. Now the last layer, now customer has given a command and server has taken the command, optimized it and decoded the query. Now the last thing is it will hit the storage unit, which is your database. It can be anything like your database. It can be any other databases like memory unit or basically you can say simply it's the storage. So that's how the three layer basically define the MySQL architecture. So workbench is a front layer. Then you have a server, which also we installed in the previous video. And then we have a database. Okay. So database is the internal database. You get a free collection of database also with the workbench, which we would be using end to end in this course, and you will be easily understanding it. So that is the overall structure of the layer. Now let me walk through the work of each and specific component one by one. So we'll start with the first layer itself. So when the client layer was there, so I as a programmer shoot a command, it goes to the workbench and using the workbench, it interact with the server using a TCP IP protocol that is known as a transition control protocol. Basically this starts to communicate with the server, which is there on the backend not on the front end. You will not be able to see the server right now. Then connection manager is basically directly managing the connection, which I mentioned about it again, the query parser, query parser, basically, let me write a short form Q P, which is query parser. It basically checks the syntax. It checks whether the syntax is correct or not. Similarly, now the optimizer, it determines the best way to execute the query optimizer as the name also says that work is also getting done on the server itself. Also caching is basically frequently using the query because they need space one by one. You are not just writing one query and one person is not only writing. 
so many programmer in your team they are writing the query so they need fast caching and buffering okay so that's how this layer is working and this is important sometimes this is asked in interview that which phase you check the syntax so you can say in the server layer the query parser is actually responsible for checking any type of syntax issue after that this will go to the database or the actual storage unit my storage uh, or any kind of storage it simply depends on what type of system your team is using and in this unit i would like to mention couple of names also like i n n o d b basically this particular database supports transaction and foreign key level information okay then we have m y and why why i am mentioning all these name because this is very important for you to know from your uh, understanding perspective in the architecture level and then we have my i s a m this is also a very important database this basically uh, very fast and suitable for heavy operational things whenever you need heavy operation so my i a s m i s m basically we use then we have memory simple memory which i mention up there so the role of memory is very simple it's the storage unit like you have ram in your laptop so it's very clear okay that's how the whole system work right from the programmer till the fetching of the query and after this this will return the answer to the server and server will display the output in the workbench so that's how the pipeline works now one last thing for today which is how a query actually execute after this after knowing this architecture obviously you can ask this question that uh, when i'm writing a query how that query is translating into result so i'll tell you the whole process so the number one step is client send a query so who is a client you and me anybody who's working on a query they will send a query to the server then connection manager will establish a connection then connection manager establish connection this is your step 2 then query parser query parser check syntax this is your step number 3 then you have query optimizer basically query optimizer will find the best execution plan so i will write query optimizer check best way to execute query after the query optimizer you have the storage engine so let me write that that is your step number 5 i hope things are clear as of now uh, this is step 4 then you have storage which is your step number 5 and storage can be disk as i mentioned it can be disk it can be memory or it can be any of those databases which i mentioned it can be any other database like db2 also it can be oracle also it can be any big data data base also any big data related databases which are there and then in the last after the storage you have the result this result will be sent back to the client so that's how a simple sql query translate within the system i hope this was meaningful to all of you and you are pretty much clear with the architecture and uh, guys this is a very simple thought okay so don't get confused with some of the big words like i n d b don't try to understand end to end what is this what is this maybe try to more focus on the process that how the process is working so how client layer is there server layer is there then storage unit is there so there are key things which you know connection manager query parser optimizer these are the things which you should know what are the role of them and how they actually works on that note i will conclude this video i hope you like the video and if you like the video please hit the like button please share this video with your friends your colleagues your family and please subscribe to 
uh, my youtube channel that actually motivates me to make more amazing content for all of you i'll see you in the next video thank you everybody